Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and it's time again to have another look at uh, the Le Petit loudspeaker, because I have received a lot of comments. Uh, many of you uh, are already building uh, Le Petit's or want to build Le Petit's and uh, asking for a little extra uh, support. So one of the questions was uh, building it with the Fostex FF125 driver. And the question was whether uh, you can use the same dimensions as, uh, as the original Hiraga dimensions. So let's have a look at that. And my short answer now is yes, you can use the exact original dimensions. And I'm giving you uh, a few other options as well. So first, let's just look at our Win ISD model. So when we look at Le Petit with the original uh, speaker cabinet volume, uh, this is the SPL output from down to from like 500 hertz down to here we have. This is the 40 hertz line and it ends at 30 hertz. So that's the frequency plot there. And, uh, and that's the original Le Petit with the FE103 Sigma driver. So what happens uh, if we, uh, let's say, add the FF125 instead. And now what we have, you see, it also has like a 1 dB higher efficiency in the higher frequencies than in the mid-range it drops a little bit more but then we have a major peak at the base uh, however this one is not with the original uh, cabinet size it, it's a little bit bigger size so if you increase the cabinet volume to 39 liters then what you are going to get is, uh, is a quite a bit more of the lower end. It does not look much on this here, but uh, this, the, the difference between those two lines mean 3.5 dB extra on the lower end. So that, that's quite a bit more. So you are going to feel it uh, as, as quite... Uh, a significant extension over the uh, standard Le Petit. So what happens if we change the cabinet volume back to the 26.5 liter? If it's the same uh, cabinet size with the FF125 uh, driver, then what we are going to get is that in comparison to the original Le Petit, it's going to sound leaner and thinner. Why? Because you are going to have uh, higher upper frequencies, so in, in the, in the mid-range and higher frequencies, you are going to have 1 dB higher uh, sensitivity, but in the mid-base it's going to be half a dB lower, and, uh, and actually it's going to have at, at the deep base, it's going to extend lower, but the, but the mid base is going to thin out a little bit. Uh, but you can get the more of the capacity of this driver if you increase a little bit the uh, volume to 39 liters, it will be a, a little bit bigger cabinet, but now the uh, base will be quite a bit uh, uh, stronger. Uh, what we could do is also like uh, tune the cabinet even lower. Oh, actually now, wait, wait a sec. Uh, I made a mistake here before, so let's just go back 26.5 liters, but the original tuning of the Le Petit was this. Sorry guys, so going, let's just cancel everything I said because I did not adjust the fre tuning frequency back to the original Le Petit. So the, this is the Le Petit. And I'm not saying that the Le Petit is tuned to 48 Hz, but what I'm saying is that when we look at uh, Jean Hiraga's published uh, results or how he recommended the port length and the port diameter when we punch that in here that gives us the software thinks it's a 48 hertz tuning actually it will be lower tuning than that in real life 
uh, this model always gives uh, higher tuning frequencies than uh, what the actual is so that's why like don't put your faith in computers it's not an exact science it's going to give you a ballpark and now we are comparing it like the same tuning uh, with the FF125 but let's see what's the vent size for that and same vent so basically you can build exactly uh, the Le Petit cabinet without any modifications and instead of using the original FE103 Sigma driver which you can't find anymore if you put in the FF125 then you will be actually getting uh, almost the same thing but a little more efficient a little more efficient in, in, in the majority of the frequency range plus the bass and then here in the mid bass uh, it, it won't be more efficient it has the exact same output as the FE103 Sigma so basically the FF125 will work even a little bit more efficiently it, it will be a little bit more dynamic than the original driver now what i was showing before is that uh, if you wanna get more out of this driver you can increase the uh, volume to 39.1 liters and drop the tuning frequency 3 hertz lower and then you will get significantly more low end output or depending how you want to do it maybe you can uh, let's say maybe 42 hertz but you see now we are losing too much energy here but uh, what i can recommend is that you can play around with the port length so basically if you make the port low length longer then this is going to the peak is going to migrate more and more to the lower energies and now you see if you tune it to 42 hertz we have like a crazy uh, addition in the deep bass compared to the original uh, cabinet and it's, it's just really going to have really monster serious uh, uh, low end and, and if you think that the Le Petit needs a sub then with uh, the FF125 tuned to this 42 hertz then you, you will probably think okay I don't need a sub anymore for that the price for that will be a slightly leaner uh, mid bass but that's as you see that's just 1 dB leaner so that's that won't be that much of a, of, of a thing happening so let's see the vent length so here you will need an 11.6 centimeter long port if you want to tune it to that crazy low tuning uh, yeah so that's it so compared to the original Lepeti in red the uh, FF125 is, uh, is the green so you can get a lot more base out of it but also you have to observe that we are looking at a slightly larger cabinet so if you are okay with a slightly larger cabinet then with this driver you can get a lot deeper base uh, than the standard Hiraga cabinet uh, but if you want the exact same size then it will work just as well as the original FE103 Sigma did uh, so going back here uh, I have one more addition if you if you want to be uh, really adventurous uh, and and uh, build the Hiraga cabinet the Le Petit but the internal dimensions not the, the ones that are published in, in uh, Hiraga's paper but these measurements so the internal height is 51.8 centimeters the width is 30.8 and the depth is 17.3 centimeters why did i do that because these uh, length they correspond to music notes and this is something i think this is my greatest contribution to the science of loudspeaker building and to the diy community because before I started talking about this, I haven't heard a single person mention this. 
that uh, when you use dimensions for your cabinet building, use musical note length. Because uh, when you are going to overload your loudspeaker by making it sing deeper than any of these notes, then the internal pressure will take over your cabinet and will excite these main resonant modes of the cabinet. And, and these notes will be playing. So let's say if you, if you are playing like, let's say, an F4 note or, or, a, or an A2 or something like that, then this, it will also excite the F5 resonance of the cabinet. And now uh, I have found that when the cabinet internal dimensions correspond to music notes, then when those things happen, then the cabinet will add a coloration that corresponds to the musical scale, the actual music that's really playing with your music. And, and it won't be as bothersome as just adding some random uh, notes which are out of tune. So I think one of the bane of a commercial loudspeaker is, and the standard engineer thinking of building cabinets, is that uh, they are not built as uh, thinking as music instruments, and, and it's just adding uh, awful resonances. So if, if we want to excite something, you excite at a musical note, it won't stick out like a real sore thumb from the flow of the music. Yes, it will color the flow of music, it will add its uh, coloration to it, but it will be uh, a coloration that works with the music, not against the music. So if uh, that's a consideration for you that, for example, you are listening to violin, cello, uh, humans singing that sort of thing and, and, and you value uh, that, that musical content in the music and you don't want just SPL and, and just uh, uh, no relationship with music then it, you don't have to worry about this but if you care about music then I extremely warmly suggest to use these dimensions and when you use these you are going to get one liter bigger internal uh, free air volume than the original design and keeping the same port length will yield one hertz lower tuning and it translates to plus one db efficiency for the low end response which is like below 45 hertz you are gaining one db if you build the cabinet with my dimensions also to place the driver and the port same distance as in the as in Jean Hiraga's design. So the center of your driver should be at the same distance from the top from of the cabinet as it is, and also the center of the port should be same distance from the bottom of the cabinet as in Hiraga's recommendation. <sighs> yes. And now uh, I think I will so this is the uh, recommendation for the bigger cabinet. So one thing, this I would recommend uh, if you build the original Hiraga cabinet, you can build it with these uh, altered internal dimensions. Jürgen, I think because you have already made several of the Le Petits, I really urge you to build one with these dimensions uh, instead of the original because you are in a position that you can compare it to uh, the original Hiraga uh, dimension. So I would really love to hear experiences with that. How does it turn out? Does it make a difference? And uh, if uh, you are using the FF125 driver, then uh, you can either use this dimension or Jean Hiraga's original dimensions, or I would recommend going for these bigger cabinet dimensions so 51.8 centimeter height width it's now make it wider so the height is the same as uh, as I recommended here 
for the optimized version, but it's wider and it's deeper. So, so that's the little difference. The, the, the wider front baffle will also mean that you will have a, a more full mid-range due to the baffle width. And uh, what else? Uh, actually, it's going to... Why, why did I put... That, that's a mistake that I put there. It's not 36 liter free air volume. It probably a little bit more than that, close to 39. Uh, uh, mount the driver flush to to the front baffle. Don't have it stick out. Just make it flush. Uh, it will have a little higher efficiency uh, than the uh, original Le Petit with the original driver and lower base, lower tuned base. And as you have seen before, port length uh, seven centimeter diameter, same diameter, same port as Le Petit but instead of 13.75 centimeter shorter 9.4 centimeter long and also the placement same uh, what else here just another uh, anyway so basically uh, that that's it those are my recommendations so basically ff125 you can uh, use it as a direct replacement for the 103 Sigma uh, and uh, also you can build it in a bigger cabinet if you want a lot more base if you use the 9.4 centimeter long port then you are getting this uh, this tuning that's 45 Hertz tuning if you want to tune it even lower to 42 Hertz then use 11.5 centimeter long port instead of the 9.4 so that's 11.5 and then you will get even more base a lot more lot deeper base so thank you please like and subscribe and uh, have fun building it um, and a few more recommendations that if you want to build uh, avoid mdf as cabinet material use baltic birch ply two centimeter thick that's three fourths of an inch and don't worry it's less than the one inch thick mdf baltic birch ply is twice as strong as mdf so that two centimeter baltic birch ply is equivalent to four centimeters of mdf uh, round all corners so don't keep them square keep them rounded just round it down either file it down or router them down uh, the, those straight corners they uh, they add a, a lot of extra harshness nastiness to the sound round it down much much better I, I do it to all my loudspeaker builds it's i would say it's mandatory and also in the lipoti there's the baffle top in the front there's that boop, there's that pouch the, same thing round the top of the pouch that's really crucial that's going to uh, prevent a lot of the issues in the mid-range that uh, that one two kilohertz uh, range uh, problems that you are hearing will be much less when the uh, baffle is rounded and there is no less diffraction happening from there i would recommend to dampen the driver basket not the inside of the cabinet let it break in first and then only start dampening the inside of, of the cabinet as needed if you think that the sound is great don't add any fat on the inside uh, most of you will probably want to add something but just use it gradually add piece by piece and observe and stop when you feel that the sound is good also keep the back panel removable when you think that you have reached the uh, optimal version don't seal it in keep it removable uh, use exclusively brass screws so to mount the driver and also to screw the cabinet together brass no no steel no aluminum nothing else exclusively brass uh, internal wiring this is absolutely mandatory if you want the base out of it you have to use very heavy gauge internal wiring you can use uh, 
solution. Multiple runs of wires, such as Jurgen is using, he has an excellent solution. He uses magnet wire. I, I really support that. That's that's a great way of uh, having a cost effective uh, way of doing it. And on the positive, a total gauge of 12 to 13 and the negative total gauge of 9 to 10. I recommend uh, using such uh, uh, wires that you have that much current uh, carrying capacity and uh, that will drastically improve the deep base uh, compared to just using some wimpy wires even like gauge 14 gauge 16 gauge 18 forget any base if you are using like gauge 18 or gauge 20 that, that, that that's a joke you are not getting any of the potential of this loudspeaker so thank you and uh, have uh, a wonderful loudspeaker build. Uh, bye bye.